introduce Alexander Arling <coughs> from Deep Baden, who will talk about the low power IEEE 802 something, 15, I forget. <laughs> 802 15 4. Yes, that's it. Yes. And about uh, what's new in, the, in that subsystem. So, a big hand of applause for Alexander. Well, hello, everybody. Um, yeah, welcome to my presentation about uh, what's new inside the Linux IEEE 802.15.4 subsystem. <coughs> so um, first I want to demonstrate uh, a little demo here. I set up uh, two virtual machines. Um, and each have uh, a USB transceiver, IEEE 802.15.4 USB transceiver connected. And I ping between the nodes inside the virtual machine. So that's an example. So it's a very high load ping, 8,000 bytes. You probably don't want it because uh, the round trip time is over a second. So it's very low weight and low. It's also because low power and such thing. Um, but it's only uh, to show what's possible to use the uh, Linux stack. So if uh, if we show the interfaces, we see a low pen interface at the button. I can move it a little bit higher than uh, the behind people. People can uh, <coughs> look at it. So the V pen interface is uh, the real IEEE 802.15.4 interface, which sent the uh, the IEEE 802.15.4 frames. And on the top, we have the low pen interface that's for making the IPv6 stuff. So this is not only a virtual interface and internal kernel mechanism um, translate the IPv6 into six low pen. And if you look uh, to the Wireshark, I have open two Wireshark windows. And this one is for the uh, VPAN stuff. So the raw 802.15.4 stop, we, we see a lot of uh, low pen frames because uh, we have the height load ping. And in the fragmentation header, uh, we see in the six low pen, it's fragmentation header because uh, the MPU size is uh, big enough. And then on the low pen interface, we have the plain uh, IPv6 view. So that's, that's translated six low pen into IPv6 layer. So we see the um, IPv6 fragments. So we have also a fragmentation over the fragmentation. So at first we have uh, IEEE 802 .54, six low pen fragmentation, and then we have IPv6 <coughs> fragmentation, but that's only uh, because it uh, was so high load ping. So we another example is uh, I have here a Contiki node, and I want to show uh, on the IUDP example, so the LED is blinking now, and when we look to Wireshark <coughs> again, then we see on the raw interface, on the VPAN interface, the, uh, the raw at, uh, 6 low pan view. That's for example, and we can see here the UDP, uh, the UDP header compression. I will show you more about it later. So we see I used a special uh, port range uh, to uh, save um, five, uh, five, two bytes or five, uh, four bytes. I don't remember. So introduction. Um, so now let's start the presentation. Um, Important new pro project, project updates. Um, the last year I told uh, the name was uh, Linux Zigbee, but uh, we don't name the project uh, Zigbee anymore. We are now uh, Linux VPAN, and we have a new mailing list that's uh, hosted on uh, kernel.org, and a new website, vpan.kernel.org. Uh, and currently, um, we have a soft system rework in pro pro uh, process because <coughs> this was uh, the, the current uh, subsystem was not very nice to use. And uh, this contains a netlink framework, NL 
802.15.4. I will talk later more about it. And um, we have a crypto layer, but we can't uh, nice access this crypto layer. So um, we have support for this, but uh, we need to access this from user space. So we need to uh, add more support for this. And the frame parsing and generation is more uh, very um, data frame time specific. That, that means uh, we have different frame types, like uh, wireless, they have auch also different frame types. And um, we need also pass and generate some uh, beacon frames and command frames and so on. So the new frameworks about the re uh, rework. Um, the basic idea is cherry pick the good things from the wireless stack. So you, you all, the, all uh, know the uh, wireless implementation um, in your notebooks if you're on uh, Linux on it. Then you have default uh, a VLAN um, interface. So we have also a default interface naming if you connect a 802.15.4 conceiver and it is registered as VPN. So in wireless, they have also different interface types. So that's the station at, if you at default, but also uh, there is uh, access point and monitoring and such devices. And we have also different frame uh, interface types like a node and monitor for promiscuous mode. And um, later we want to uh, support also our coordinator interface types. So uh, we also um, take, take the stuff from the um, user space tool, IV. You can type uh, IV in your notebook if you have Linux with uh, wireless support. And we grab this, uh, uh, the same uh, tool front end. The, uh, this is a whole framework to easily add new commands. And we name it just IV and then add uh, a pan behind. Behind and we grab the um, NL, yeah, the Netlink kernel framework. I will talk ma later more about this. It's named 802.11, and we just replaced the 802.11 with 802.15.4. And also, wireless have the same paradigm, like uh, doing soft and hard Mac inter uh, interfaces. So transceivers can can be um, can be accessed by uh, making more hard, uh, hard Mac stuff on the transceiver side, or doing the soft software, uh, soft Mac, doing it uh, on the kernel side. So um, it's a different kind of uh, transceivers which you can uh, buy. And what exactly is? Um, I will show you uh, just the IV. So I type the IV. That's the um, normal um, wireless commands. You can see uh, set frequency, name, mcast, rate, and, and so on. And we just type now IV pan, and it looks very the same. It's just uh, with 802.15.4 functionality. So we, um, it's very easy uh, to add. Uh, new commands on it, but we have not many. And I also type here uh, IV pan, uh, IV uh, pan phi, and that's also available in uh, wireless and to show all registered files and def for all uh, <laughs> registered uh, interfaces on the corresponding phi CO in this case. And we have also some Mac settings like short address, extended address, uh, type, which I, I already know, and the pan ID, and such things. You can also set these parameter over this tool. So um, we do this all uh, with NL802.15.4. So the what is NL802.15.4? NL802.15.4 is a kernel space. Netlink framework. Netlink is a socket communication between um, user space and kernel space, and it's used mostly for configuration stuff, like setting frequency and uh, address uh, things. 
And the goal of uh, the new framework is e to have a framework which allow us to um, easily add new netlink commands to access this from user space. And why we add, add this is the code looks almost the same like wireless. So uh, wireless people get easier familiar. And it's an already well established framework. And we hope we getting more the wireless community from the 802.11 for 802.15.4 IoT <laughs> use cases. So that means uh, you don't need to put uh, 802.11 uh, transceivers into each uh, smoke detector or such else, which uh, is more cost, more power, and such thing. Then you can uh, you can also also use 802.15.4. So a code example uh, that's a calling chain from uh, user space shell uh, until the kernel space. And I uh, this sh this example shows the pan ID. And I call out uh, the relationship between each uh, flag. So for example, here the uh, CIB net def, and uh, it's a uh, required def. And then we have in the kernel space implementation also a, a flag need net def. So you need to type def uh, from the user space side. And um, it's really the same like wireless is does. The green one is uh, for some callback, um, callback functions to um, set and get the netlink attributes. So that's uh, the pan ID uh, <coughs> number in this case. So another framework is in 6 low pan, which is our upper layer for, uh, for making the IP for 6 stuff, is the next header compression. And what that is uh, the six low pan net next header compression. Also, the six low pan RFC is uh, describes compression formats. That's also for uh, IPv6 compression header, and also for the next header. The next header is, for example, uh, transport transport uh, protocols like UDP, or also the IPv6 header. Um, extensions header, like uh, hop by hop or routing header. And um, the NSC framework is pretty simple because uh, it's um, a kernel module, describes one compression format, for example, UDP. And um, it has uh, two call, uh, callbacks for making uh, uncompression and unco uh, on compression. And but only uh, NLC UDP is currently available. I um, demonstrated here. I type ls mod to list all m uh, loaded modules, and we see the NLC <coughs> UDP is here, and a lot of other other NLC. I told uh, that UDP is only support, but the all the other ones are only there because. Uh, for uh, registration, the IDs. And uh, if you're using in your network uh, hop by hop, it will show a warning. Uh, you probably should implement it or uh, don't using it in your network. So for now, I uh, want to make uh, unload the NAC uh, UDP compression. So we have no UDP co compression anymore. and Start again the Contiki demo with the blue LED and show what uh, Wireshark displays here. And we see in the six low pan header, we don't see any um, next header compression anymore. It's just a plain UDP uh, header. So, future work is. Uh, for IEEE 802.15.4 is to move the old Netlink interface because we grabbed now uh, everything from wireless and that's uh, pretty better. And implement the still VIP re rework parts, which I mentioned before, and more Mac functionality. That's, for example, uh, coordinator support and management layer 
triggered by Netlink, what this means is the IEEE 802.15.4 uh, standard describes also some uh, scanning for uh, <coughs> pans. And we just um, making the whole algorithm um, for that in the user space. We just uh, implement some uh, Netlink um, configuration. And then we trigger only the algorithm by uh, our ML our management layer um, scan. Uh, Netlink uh, callback. So this is uh, this is just like wireless is also just for scanning uh, access points. And for six low pan, um, the configuration interface for NHC. What this means is um, we need some s also some uh, Netlink interface for uh, next header compression because uh, for UDP you can decide if you want to add a checksum <laughs> or, or a light checksum, but this is only uh, at the moment very uh, default that uh, it's always added, the checksum. Uh, and implement, of course, uh, more NAC modules. There's a quite a lot of uh, RFCs outside which describes uh, max header compressions. So summary, um, yeah, what I told you in this talk is um, what we grab from the wireless stack. And if you, um, it's <coughs> pretty the same um, what I told you also for uh, the wireless stack, how they deal with Netlink. And we just uh, grab, out, uh, grab the ideas from it. So. You can do now um, visit the vpen.cakelab.org website, and we have some uh, table on it with uh, supported hardware for 802.15.4 transceivers and get the uh, 802.15.4 standard. Set up some test environment is also described on the website. And uh, possible hacking tasks are, as a newbie, I, um, Start simple tasks like the the standard describes a lot of numbers, but uh, they also have some proper names for it. For like uh, CAA mode, uh, uh, one is uh, a, a lower or something else for uh, collision avoidance. And finally, you can uh, become a wireless guru and. If you are that, you can look for similar paradigms in 802.15.4 and 802.11, and apparently copy the solution from the wireless subsystem. So um, then we uh, grow more together to making more um, free stuff. And it's very easy to uh, handle in both uh, subsystems. So is there any questions? Yes. Are there also ideas from six low pen that could be used by the wireless subsystem? Uh, so the question was uh, that uh, six low pen can also be used uh, in the wireless system. No, no. The, so you now copy ideas from the wireless subsystem into six low pen? Ah, uh, uh, the, uh, the question was that uh, we also grab ideas from the six low pen uh, wireless implementation into uh, IEEE 802.15.4 wireless implementation? No, if there are ideas for the six low pen from the six low pen implementation that yeah. could be used by the dot uh, 11. Ah, okay. Uh, if ideas from the wireless implementation, uh, six low pen implementation, implementation can also be used in the wireless implementation. Yeah. Okay. Um, no, because. Uh <laughs> Because uh, six low pen is uh, need to be specified, so um, there's two uh, RC outside for uh, described as um, six low pen over eight um, eight hundred two fifteen four and for Bluetooth low energy. So that's uh, only the two uh, uh, layer two, so, um, which are specified to run uh, six low pen on it. So maybe you can do uh, some stuff there. Yeah, but that's not real a uh, standard then. 
Okay. My question is very stupid, but does this, like what you're saying is that what you can think is not actually available as kind of import Wi-Fi in Linux. Is that the conclusion? Is that the... Uh, uh, to using Bigby, um, inside uh, Linux is because uh, Bigby is a closed standard and uh, there's some... Okay. You can probably uh, run Bigby in, in user space, but then... Uh, you need uh, more um, better access to the Mac layer. Uh, what's the best hardware to play around with it at the moment? Uh, what's the best hardware that is available? Okay, the best. Okay, the question was, wha what is the best hardware? So um, I work myself with the AT, uh, with the AT uh, sixty-eight RF. Uh, 230 and there's a lot of Atmel um, transceivers. That's the probably the best hardware we have is on the website, but um, a lot of current mainline uh, drivers doesn't support everything uh, to uh, set up promiscuous mode and such things. But uh, AT RF uh, 230 support um, the most of it. Okay. Yeah. Um, there is a there is a thing called the Pulse that I've used for uh, Cisco on my Cisco uh, Solar Netbook. Yeah. Um, have you started to run it? Or yeah, it is it's it's, uh, it's already um, mainline. Okay. Um, it's uh, just the RFC for uh, Bluetooth low energy six low pan, uh, referencing the eight hundred two fifteen four. Uh, RFC for the header compression. So we did some uh, sharing code because it's uh, almost the same. Just for uh, Bluetooth, have a, I think uh, not a eight byte uh, MAC address. I have six, and then need to fill up the um, address. And um, for the next Bluetooth um, specification, uh, four dot. Uh, Two is uh, six low pan. That's uh, integrated. I, I heard that it's integrated in the uh, transceivers and such feature. Yes. There's a problem when exporting data for like monitoring applications. Do you plan to make scrapping or exporting data from uh, the WPAN network easy, like from JSON format export, something like that? Uh, can you repeat the question? Yeah, if you plan to make uh, data export yes. uh, easy, like for example, uh, uh, exporting in JSON format. And in in JSON? You have this problem of, uh, that cannot be traced. When you uh, run IW on the 802.11, it says, please don't trace the output of this program because it will be unstable. Online, it will be output. Um, if you want to script it or something. Yeah. So yeah. that's but that's the same for IWPAN. So that's mostly copied from there. So I think at the moment there's no no stability there or something. So it would be the same problem you have there. Okay. So okay. At least that is what we have right now. So okay. Yeah, uh, more questions? Okay. Yeah. Yeah.